the investigation into Elijah Wu's disappearance end today? Um, well, as of today, I can't really talk about the investigation. Um, there is an investigation taking place, but at the same time, we continue to search. Um, that search has really just continued to expand. We have focal areas that we believe um, we're searching in the right areas and we'll continue to do so. Um, but that search right now has really focused primarily on about 15 to 20 square miles that we've thoroughly checked. Like I said, we'll continue to check that, that area, but it's also led to expanding on that area. Um, as you, you've seen prior, you know, we've had tips and leads that led us to a landfill, for instance. Um, but even as recently as earlier in the week, we were out doing kayak searches. Um, most recently, we've been doing aerial searches with planes. Um, so we continue to search in, in just about any way you can think. Are you searching for a body? We're searching for Elijah. I don't know how that, that will turn out, but we are searching for Elijah. Um, I mean, I have a four and a half year old. He's not going to have survived out there by himself for this long. You know, you've been on record saying that you don't think this is an abduction. Correct. So do you think he was trafficked? Do you think he was killed or died? We have no evidence whatsoever at this point. Um, again, we've had over uh, 10,000, you know, video files that we've looked at. We've had over 1,500 tips and leads that we've tracked down. Um, we've vetted, and we have nothing leading us to believe that he was abducted in any way um, and nothing to say that he just simply walked off. This is a, a, a tight-knit community. You can't walk around without people knowing what's going on. Um, a young boy such as Elijah would be reported very quickly. So how frustrating is that for you then that with it being such a tight-knit community that you haven't been able to find him? Well, you, you mentioned, you know, having a child of your own. I have a child myself, and I can't stop thinking about, you know, my 14-year-old daughter and, and just equating, like, you know, through life, all the scares that you've had. Um, that's what's frustrating. We're on day 52 now, and we still haven't found Elijah. When, I think, I asked this at the news conference, um, and I'll ask it again. When was the last time anybody other than Jesse Vang or Katrina Bauer saw Elijah Vu. I know we have those, those surveillance pictures from Friday. That was four days before he went missing. Yeah, I can't give an exact date on that as far as the investigation. But Have you been able to uncover images or talk to witnesses about <coughs> people who have seen him right. after those pictures? We've talked to numerous people. Um, so in the early days... Um, you know, we get questions and you see Facebook messages and stuff and people questioning, you know, when I mentioned that we just did a kayak search um, and they're questioning, why are we checking waterways right now? Well, we're not just now checking those waterways. We've been checking them all along. On day one, we had people out on the waterways. Um, but again, you know, we could check until you've actually been out on, say, the West Twin River, like I was with my staff. It, it's just daunting when you see just how mass area that is to search um, and we'll continue to do so we know that there's been a milwaukee case where um, somebody just turned up now that went missing in in january another case where somebody went missing in december i believe out of oshkosh um, so i'll continue to search rivers too until you know we find him um, but yeah we continue to search everywhere um, we had neighborhood canvases where we literally went into every home um, talked to everybody that lived in each home. We checked every room, every cabinet, everything in those homes. Um, it doesn't get much more thorough than that. We had cooperation with all the community. Um, we've done drone searches, and, and the software, I'm, I'm not a drone expert, but the software that they tell me um, can show disrupted um, ground. It can show decomposing body. It can show coloration differences, it, it picks up on those things and tags those. And um, again, the data that comes out, when I say not leaving an area or a stone unturned, it, it really doesn't. Like, we're checking everything. When you said you mentioned it's like 15 to 20 mile kind of area that you focus that search. I mean, it sounds like you, you've turned over every stone, you've checked everything. Yeah. 
Well, you would like to think so, but again, you, you know, you bring up the 15 to 20 square miles, and, and I think that looks fantastic even on a map. However, um, you know, if you do some research, Manitowoc County alone is almost 1,500 square miles. So even that vast area doesn't come close to covering the county. Um, so again, just like being out on the, the West Twin River and seeing what a daunting task that is, it's no different when you, you look at all the forest and swamp land and everything else we have in Manitowoc County. Why focus on that specific area? I mean, have because, the tips and leads yeah. have led you to that area? Yeah, well, we've had tips and leads, and then also, again, knowing that we have no knowledge that this child simply walked off and that it wasn't an abduction, we follow all the tips and leads that we have had, and then along with any video evidence that we've had, um, it leads us to believe that we're in the right area, especially when you match that with research of missing and endangered children. How quickly into the investigation did you realize that there wasn't an abduction and that it was something else? Um, I'm, I'm not certain on that. Um, the telltale time period where the whole focus changed was probably in that first half hour because we responded for a child that simply walked off, believing that would have been in a couple minutes, you know, a few minutes prior. We've had those kind of calls here in Two Rivers in the past, and everybody races out because, again, we have children. We've all been children. We may have siblings. Um, everybody can relate to that. Um, I myself went out in my personal vehicle looking for this child and was talking to everybody I could, stopping at businesses. Typically that's what happens, and within minutes it's usually a mistake. You know, he got picked up by a different bus or um, a family member, you know, unbeknownst to somebody, picked them up. Um, it, it's usually something like that, and it's reported fairly quickly. Or, or they're simply found at a local playground or something. Um, so that's what we were hoping. And in this case, um, two things happen when, that, when that's reported. You're out searching and somebody's investigating. Um, soon into that, we learned that it was several hours prior that he may have walked off. So that changed the whole focus at that point because now we had an endangered child um, out with what was reported as possibly only a blanket um, in very cold temperatures in winter um, and three years old. A three-year-old can't care for themselves. Um, so that's when everything changed and we contacted FBI, DCI, all our neighboring jurisdictions, uh, police, fire, paramedics, um, DNR, National Guard was out with a helicopter. Everything was all hands on deck, searching everything we could. You mentioned the blanket. It was found about five days later. Right. Um, what significance did that play into the investigation as it was several miles away from where Elijah Vu was reported yeah, missing? We were already searching, and I would say that was in a large search area, maybe not the primary search area, but definitely um, an area of interest. Um, so when that was found, really all it did was again tell us that we feel we're searching in the right areas um, and expanded upon the areas that we were searching. I know another news organization captured video of that dinosaur shoe. Have you been able to confirm that that was in fact Elijah's shoe as part of the description when you guys put out that he might have had these dinosaur shoes? Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Okay. And then I know that Jesse Vang said that there was his teenage son. He'd gotten the, him on the bus that morning um, and that Elijah was sleeping, still sleeping at that point. Have you been able to talk with that other child? And has yeah. he been helpful and been able to tell you anything that he saw Elijah that morning? Or Yeah, so I can't go into details on that, but I can say that everybody was spoken to. You just won't. Whether or not he saw him that you can't. Well, this is a juvenile, so I'm not going to get into that. Okay. I know there's all these citizens that are out there searching. Are you working in conjunction with them? Are you giving them any sort of direction? I mean, these people, you talk to them. We just They just searched the Avery Salvage Yard right. earlier this week. Um, you know, some of those people think they're hopeful to, to still find Elijah alive. Right. I mean, at some point, yeah. you feel like... Uh, you have to, are you, do you feel like you're being honest 
with them and guide them in where they should be searching and, and kind of what their expectation should be? Yeah, absolutely. I have been. Um, as early as today, I was reaching out to DCI, who is working as the go-between with us and the family. So as early as today, I was having those conversations. Um, and we continue to do so. So before the public actually hears anything, we're actually having those conversations with the family. Because one, I think that's the most important. And they are the ones actually coordinating a lot of these public searches. Um, so I've mentioned it before, and I'll continue to mention, if people want to assist in any way, speak with the family and work with those coordinated search efforts because they are the ones coordinating with us. So are they searching in that 15, 20 mile area that you are specifically focusing on? They have been and then any areas that we expand on, that's what we're talking with them and coordinating with. Now you also put out this uh, ask for people to share video of this vehicle. What is the connection to the vehicle yeah, to I, this I can't investigation go- and has anything come out of that? Right. I can't go into any of the details of the vehicle because there is an investigation taking place. Um, do you feel like you've been forthcoming with the public? I know you held one news conference in the past month, more, more than a month, I guess, yeah. and it just kind of directed people to your social media page. I mean, when you have a missing child, um, do you think you should have been out there more, like, every day talking? or? Uh, no, I actually think everybody's been very appreciative and we've gotten nothing but positive feedback about how transparent we've been throughout the whole search. Has this been overwhelming for the department? I know city council approved extra funding. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's overwhelming. It's just, it's a priority. And, you know, that's, it, we really just have to react to what we've been given here. Um, so when you talk about the expenses and that contingency that they put into our budget, um, it's because everybody's main focus is finding Elijah. And are you still, I know you originally had kind of a command post set up. I'm assuming that, I guess the woman up front told me a couple of weeks ago that that was no longer, or maybe it was the city no. council member who said that the, the main command post. So is the investigation scaled back? Not as many people obviously don't have uh, assistance from other counties coming in on a daily basis, or, or is that still happening? So that is still happening. Um, It's not scaled back as much as it's been reconfigured. So um, especially with all the technology that we have, there isn't a necessity to have everybody in in one location. Um, In fact, it doesn't help us at all. It's more beneficial to have people working remote in a lot of these cases. A good example is um, it's easier for me to be working from my computer, for instance, to be reviewing videos on multiple screens than it is to be stuck on a small laptop in a command post where I don't have those resources. Have you captured any video of Elijah in the days leading up to his disappearance? Have you, have you seen anything? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we found video evidence of Elijah necessarily. Um, there have been things that we found of interest, yes. Um, but again, it's not something I can talk about as far as the investigation at this point. And I guess video, I also mean pictures, images, not just video. Yeah. Yeah. So when I talk about videos, um, yeah, videos alone is 10,000 plus video files that we've had. As you can imagine with the technology today versus even say five years ago with flock, uh, with not flock, with, uh, Uh, ring doorbells, blink cameras, things like that. You might have, you know, in in one time period, you might have hundreds of videos that you have to review. Um, So that's just one example. But yeah, other people have different technology where it may be still frame pictures. Um, I think everybody's seen stuff floating around. Obviously, one of those um, that was floating around, and yes, we had seen that too, was from Ross's Auto, for instance. Um, that's a well-known picture that, that everybody's seen. Yeah, he, he told me that he immediately when he realized yep. he was in that, reached out to you guys. Do you have, are those things still coming in, I guess? Yeah, I will say they're not coming in like they had been. We're not getting as many tips. Um, and that's why we continue to have conferences like we're having here today um, with you is because I think he needs to stay in the forefront of everybody's minds until we find him. Are you hopeful that you're going to find him? I am hopeful that we're going to find him. 
Do you feel like you're closer today than you were 52 days ago? I can't say that because until we find him, how can you say that? Unfortunately, that's what I wake up to every morning is a different idea, a different thought, um, something that you know maybe we can do, uh, something different. You know, like I said this morning already, I was reaching um, out to DCI and having conversations about an idea that the family had and how we might be able to incorporate that and how and where. Where do you go from here? I mean, what's you just continue to search and stay positive in those search efforts. How hard is it to, I guess, positive that you're just going to find him, but, but might not necessarily find him alive? Yeah. But. I mean, unfortunately, we have to be open to all possibilities. Um, I mean, clearly, some of these areas are not pleasant that we're searching. Um, I wouldn't be happy if we found him in a sewer or a landfill, for instance. But at the same time, if that's where he is and we need to bring closure, we will. You know, that we have to search those. We have to run down those tips and leads, regardless of how unpleasant they are, because we have, we have, we're at day 52 and we have to be open to all possibilities. Are you, I mean, Main Surge is still here in Manitowoc County. You don't think that Elijah ever left Manitowoc County? Well, We've obviously been searching in areas outside of Manitowoc County, so that's not necessarily correct. Um, but yes, our primary focus has been Manitowoc County. Do you think he's outside of Manitowoc County? At this point, I have a strong belief the areas that we're searching are the correct areas, and we'll continue to search them. Is there anything else you think is important that I haven't asked about? I don't think so. Where is that 15 to 20 mile area that you're kind of focusing your search on here in Manitowoc County? Just is it in the Two seat. Rivers area? Is it more towards Manitowoc? I was just looking to see if I had any notes for you. Um, the 15 to 20 square miles that we've thoroughly searched have really been um, in more of the immediate area. I will say the family, um, again, we've stayed in close coordination with them and they've searched a ton of Manitowoc County. Um, I, would, I would estimate probably half of the county and we continue to do so. Some of that overlaps, um, some of it doesn't, um, but we all have the same search efforts in mind. When you, I, the, the area where the blanket was found, there's a, a sign that says, um, you know, under video surveillance. Were you hopeful when you went out there that that was going to help you only to find out that the farmer doesn't actually have video? Yeah, I think, I think there's been a lot of those cases where I'm hopeful that, that something would turn up and we'd have that, you know, that clear tip or video or something. Um, but in essence... Yeah, that, that's just another one of those, you know, small disappointments, I guess. Um, but we, we run into that frequently, you know, where people have a camera up and it doesn't work, for instance. Um, and then when you have to investigate something, it does you no good. You, do you think Jesse Vang and Katrina Bauer are both involved in, in Elijah's disappearance? I can't say that at this point. Yeah, I'm sorry, there's just so much I can't talk about with the investigation portion of this. Yeah. We'll just wait and put it with, you know, people. Obviously, you guys are working on it, but the, to put it out publicly. I'm trying to think um, if there's anything else that's... The, the frustrating part is, you know, in a lot of the social media, there's narratives out there that just, they're just not true. Um, so we've been trying to stay as transparent as possible, whether it's interviews like this or putting out our social media posts as frequently as we can. Um, and people still run with their own stories. And that's, that's, that's the biggest frustration. Are there surveillance cameras in that building? I mean, that's, that was one of the things that was online, that there 
you know, there's cameras in that building that would have captured anything, or that that apartment smelled like bleach. Yeah, I guarantee there, you that any of those things, if they're true, we know about them. Just because the investigation can't share. Correct. And the blanket you waited because I'm assuming waiting. I think the woman out front said for the DNA evidence or whatever to confirm that that was in fact. I can't confirm how it was confirmed that that was Elijah's blanket, but yes, it took some time to confirm whether or not it was his blanket. 